So if you think about just the context of what these young people are living through, right? Uh, India is, is invincible, right? Forever, you know, this has been the promise of India. I remember I was just out of college and we were one of the four nations that was supposed to really lead the, the world into the next century. It's not kind of panned out that way quite quite the way we expected it to. But you know, we're in a situation today where uh, India is the world's third largest economy. We're the fastest growing large economy. And you think of all of the things that are happening geopolitically, we're still fairly optimistic as a country about what the future holds for us. Uh, we're third on the, on the Startup Nations Index, and we've produced billionaires by, by the hundreds now. Right, so it's a, it's a really, really interesting and promising time to be young in India. And if we think about just the digital ecosystem, I don't need to talk to you guys about that, but just to flash a slide so that you guys understand, I've done a little bit of homework on this. Uh, if you think about just the scale of what the digital audience in India represents, we talk about more than 170 million users on the internet, uh, and they're spending in excess of seven hours, right? Uh, and as we think about the screen ages, I also felt, uh, so just keep moving, yeah. I also felt the term screen ages uh, was a little inappropriate. It was a term I first heard when I was uh, working in Adidas in 2005, uh, and our CEO in Adidas back in the day used to describe us as digital virgins, right? So a term which was literally 17 years back used to describe people like myself, doesn't seem as appropriate for a generation that's literally born in the digital age. Uh, and so as I kind of went through uh, a bit of research, you know, I bumped into this word called true gen. Uh, it's not a new word. Uh, it's, it's something that was used uh, by uh, Hemingway uh, back in the First World War, and it represents really uh, meaningful intelligence vis-a-vis -vis gossip, vis-a-vis uh, -vis hearsay. Uh, and I think if you look at what the the true gen really represent, uh, it seems to be a very appropriate description of what this generation of youngsters is really about. So, so yeah, so we say hello to true gen, and I'm going to share with you a few, or my take on what true gen really represents. You know, the fact that youth uh, really influence in deep ways society, culture, politics in deep ways is not new. It's happened generation after generation. So what really makes these youngsters different? Why are they being called true gen when you know, our generations were called X, Y, and whatever. Uh, it's because what they have in their hands is the power of the internet. Uh, you know, as a kid, my biggest dream as a school kid was to buy uh, the 24 set encyclopedia. Right? That was my ultimate dream. That kind of knowledge is today available on the palm of your hands. Right? And to kind of have access to that information, that knowledge, is what really transforms how these young kids behave and interact with the world around them. So what I have for you in the next 11 minutes now is, is what I feel are the five distinct features of how this generation behaves. And the first one is they're obviously hypercognitive. Uh, just to call out over here, I've borrowed heavily from uh, uh, an Instagram handle of a young artist. So I've given her credit. She doesn't know I'm using her pictures, but, but there are some, some really, really amazing pieces of, uh, of art that really describe her generation in such a, such a beautiful way. So, so the first thing is really they're hypercognitive. They, they kind of are getting information from all kinds of sources. Uh, and you know, imagine you being a young kid having to deal with all kinds of inputs in terms of what, how society is evolving and changing, pressures, peer pressure, parental pressure, education, career. And so these guys are essentially dealing with a whole lot of information and, and kind of churning it in their minds real time. The, the other one which is really unique is their, their identity nomads. I think when, when you look at the previous generations, you kind of stuck to a set definition of what you stood for or what you wanted to be or what you think or what you thought uh, you were kind of pursuing. What's unique about the younger generation today or, or uh, this generation today is they, they kind of um, experiment with their ad identities. They might be students in the morning, uh, but they go out for a meal, suddenly they're an influencer. Their influence base might only be a few hundred people, uh, but they're suddenly becoming photographers. Move to the evening, they might be pursuing music or whatever. So they're basically kind of really experimenting with what, their true ver what the true best versions of themselves is. And that makes them really interesting because brands then can kind of really talk to them and relate to them in different, many different ways. Uh, the third thing, uh, and I just have a couple of, uh, so if you could just go down a slide. If you just kind of look at the scale of what this has meant, uh, I've just got one example to kind of share with you guys. If you just look at the scale of the creative community today, uh, there are over 
240,000 content creators. I believe there are about 40,000 content creators in India who have more than 100,000 followers. Um, they're delivering 5.2 billion unique video views in a month, right? And the scale of this creator economy is about 6,800 crores. Uh, so if you think about it, this is no longer a side hustle. This is really mainstream and this is deeply impacting the way young kids, of course, are buying and shopping, but also about how cultures being influenced in deep ways. If you move on, uh, this is a generation, to use a term that they use, uh, this is also a generation that's woke. And what that really means is they have a very powerful point of view. And this point of view is, is something that they aren't shy from sharing. Uh, where they share this could be from, from WhatsApp to Twitter to Instagram, wherever it might be, but this is a generation that's ready to kind of offend, if that's what it means. Uh, so they, they aren't really kind of shy of expressing themselves, but what's really important is, this isn't just about kind of making someone feel offended or whatever, this is about expressing a point of view in a very powerful way. Uh, if you again kind of go back a few decades, when there was uh, a coup in a country, in a banana republic, the way the army would take over the countries, they would kind of go to the TV station, they would take over the radio stations, and that's what represented power. If you look at what the current generation's got, you have a thought, you have a point of view, you just open an app and you put it out there, and you suddenly have a bunch of like-minded people really kind of coming together. And the way this has kind of shown up is, of course, them taking to the streets. Uh, and again, I haven't put pictures that are, are kind of politically motivated because I, I kind of wanted to kind of keep away from having a political uh, leaning in this, in this conversation, but think of all of the things that have happened in the last three or four years. You know, I, back in 2019, where, when there were a few questionable decisions kind of being put out in the world, I was so glad that we had the young people of our country taking the streets to express a point of view and standing behind what they believed to be true. So it's, it's really an amazing generation from that stand point, point of view. Uh, moving on, it's also uniquely a generation that's self self-immersed, self-obsessive, um, that isn't shy from, from kind of spending money on themselves and kind of expressing their individuality. Uh, and one of the very unique ways in which this kind of shows up is this notion of, of sneaker culture, right? I worked in Adidas and I remember back in 2015 when we started launching the Yeezys in India, they used to cost 23,000 rupees a pop. And I remember we got seven pairs down in India that year, in that year, because I couldn't believe there would be more than seven, maybe eight people who would spend 23,000 rupees on a pair of shoes. Uh, but you cut to today, in 2022, the website, the Adidas website literally crashes every time there's a easy release because there are kids chasing this product, right? So it's, it's really an amazing transformation of kids really wanting to kind of spend on either borrowing an identity or just kind of you know, backing themselves to being who they are. Uh, moving on, so if you go to the next slide, please. Yeah, and so what all of this kind of theory has meant is this is also a generation that's extremely anxious. Now, if you think about it, um, they're, they're worried about their careers, they're, they're worried about peer pressure. This is, a, this is also a generation that is pursuing success in many different ways. This whole notion of being woke, uh, this whole notion of you know, being in touch with who you are, uh, puts a tremendous amount of pressure on young minds. And again, being in India, we don't really kind of spend too much time on thinking about anxiety or depression, etc. But this is also a generation that puts an extreme amount of pressure on themselves in representing their true selves to the world around them. Uh, and imagine like every picture that you put out is literally asking for a judgment on how you think and how you feel and how you dress up. So this is also uh, a generation that's extremely anxious and we'll see how that kind of resolves itself over a period of time, but this is something which is very, very real as well. So what does this really mean? I mean, all of you guys are marketers here and you've not come here to kind of listen to me talk about something which you can Google. Uh, but really, I think I wanted to kind of share my perspective on, on what this means for brands uh, and how did this play out. Um, so if you, if you look at it, you know, one of the big challenges I think for our, our, our time now is we've all leaned, leaned very heavily on digital media in the last few years. Uh, and I think there is, there is increasingly a sense of frustration with how digital media and, and just digital platforms behave and, and kind of the news that they put out. Uh, and this is, this is something from, no, no, just stay on that slide, sir. Uh, and this is something from the uh, MTV Atma Nirbhar study earlier last year. Uh, and it really tells you about the, the overall decline in interest and trust 
uh, on digital platforms. And that's worrying because maybe at a level what this means is young people are moving away from social platforms the way we moved away from news channels, right? So it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting challenge for all of us to really wrap our arms around and wrestle to the ground because this could again kind of, you know, put a very powerful medium really low in their pecking order of, of trust. Uh, Moving on, and so this is this is what it eventually translates into. People are putting up ad blockers. They're kind of you know putting their basically putting a a, a a palm out saying no no this is this is this is advertising. Don't talk to me like this. I am not I'm not silly. I'm not foolish. I'm not going to believe every single thing that you tell me. Uh, and so what this kind of translates into then, so you have to just go a little faster. Yeah. So what they what they really want, right? And I think the one line summary of this slide really is they want authenticity from brands. What they want is a believable storyline. What they want is not advertising, but for brands to live what they say, right? And so as, as things kind of evolve, as the role of media evolves, and I, I think the, the, the people who are on this panel just before me spoke about the role that influencers will increasingly play. I think it's important for us to also evolve in the way we kind of relate to, to, the, to the true gen. So what is this, what is this true gen really about? I mean, they are relying ever increasingly on, on content which is broadcast on OTT platforms. I don't know how many of you are from the OTT platform world, but that really is the go-to destination for young kids, right? It's, it's, it's the reason because it's, it's believable, they trust creators, and it's a point of view that they feel is not being pushed to them, but it's being kind of being more relatably told. Um, so, so what exactly is the marketing imperative? I'm going to hurry through because it's three minutes for my, for my session. Uh, but so what's the imperative for us from a marketing standpoint? I think the number one is draw them in. Stop annoying them with content that they don't want to kind of see. Create stuff which is interesting. Create magical work that they kind of really can kind of lean into. Collaborate with, with, with like-minded brands, with like-minded uh, influencers, with like-minded initiatives so that they can relate to your brand stories. Uh, third would be to kind of simply tap into the passion. This is the oldest formula in the marketing playbook, uh, but one which is increasingly as relevant uh, as anything else. And lastly, always be authentic. Be true to what you stand for and live that promise uh, consistently. I have a few examples of brands that do this really, really well. Um, and pardon me for kind of boring examples from brands that I've worked in, in the past, but it's baggage that you carry throughout your life, right? Uh, the first example is, is Adidas Pali. I don't know if you guys have heard of this, but you know, the, the younger generation cares deeply about the environment, cares deeply about climate change, cares deeply about uh, environmental issues. And what Adidas has done is, is brilliant, amazing, and, and just so right. Uh, they actually use ocean plastic to create products. And this is action which is not just about advertising. What they also do is, and this is a, the next picture is actually from Bombay. They actually work with local NGOs in cleaning up beaches. So you not only have like a, a macro view of saying, we're going to create products with plastic. It just doesn't end there. The brand also locally works in making a difference culturally locally, right? And the plastic that they kind of get from these beaches is shunted to a factory that recreates this plastic into fabrics, which is then kind of you know, created into apparel, which you guys then buy. So an amazing end-to-end storyline that, that Adidas does. The next example is actually a, a brand that deeply resonates with me. It's not in India yet, uh, but the brand is Patagonia, and they actually actively encourage you not to buy their products. And it's not to say that you shouldn't buy their products, it's more about do not buy a Patagonia product if you already have one. Don't fall for this storyline of you need something new just because it's a new year. It's about if you, can, if you have something from Patagonia and if you can repair it, we actually have a corner in our store, we can fix your zippers and your jackets, we can fix the show that you bought with us. We don't want you to buy more, we want you to live sustainably. And the last example is from Oppo. I work there. Uh, and I think this example is simply about how can we as a tech company give back to the environment. Uh, and so our, our tech team, our engineering team has been really working hard in you know, bringing together a proposition that not only makes sense from a product KSP or USP uh, standpoint where instead of the usual 800 charging cycles that most smartphones live up to, we actually build products that answer to a 1600 charge cycle expectation. And so what that translates into is your phone battery is gonna be good as new for four years. And that is a small step that we as, as Oppo have taken in kind of making sure that we as a brand live in a, in a sustainable way and, and kind of practice what I'm preaching here.
So yeah, that's that. I am in time. Uh, anything that you'd want to kind of talk about? We have 60 seconds. Any questions? You can go to the last slide. I've put a nice looking logo there. No? All right, cool. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you.